Hey guys, welcome back to our podcast, Books Don't Review Themselves. I'm Jessica. I'm Kim. And today we are going to be talking about The Mr. by E.L. James. And I'm super excited (laughs) about this one because Kim didn't want to read it. Now, if you don't know who E.L. James is, she is the author of the Fifty Shades of Grey series. And if you don't know who she is, where have you been? Yeah, get out from under your rock. Now, I believe Kim said, did you read the Fifty Shades? No. No, you didn't read them. No. Okay, so I listened to them, and you, but you watched the movies. I watched all the movies. See, and I did not watch the movies, so this this will be fun. Now, I'll tell you a little story. There's a couple reasons why I didn't read the books. The biggest reasons is because I thought they were going to be trash. But <laughs> the second reason is because I saw this study online and I worked at a library and that they, was it hepatitis C? I don't know. It was some nasty thing that they swabbed like various Fifty Shades of Grey books that were returned. <gasps> and there was nastiness on these books. Did you wear gloves? I like, I was lucky enough. I worked in the back most of the time, so I didn't have to check these things in. But if I did have to check one of them in, I would go to the bathroom right afterwards and scrub my hands. So that, just besides of the content of the book, it was that thing that really turned me off. So just Google it, and I am sure you will find whatever study I am talking about. So on That's, that note, yum. Yes. Yummy. Ugh. Having, well, I listened to the audiobooks. I start. I started reading the first Fifty Shades of Grey, like actually reading the physical book. And my cousin had read all them. And she was like, you got to read them. They're so good. It's a beautiful love story, like all this stuff. Now, I knew, I, I knew what was in it. And she won't let her mother read it. But I knew what was, it, what was in it. But she said, it's more than just the sex, okay? okay. And... I started reading it and I remember I was in the vehicle and I'm like, oh my God, and my husband's driving. And he's like, what? And so I like read him a paragraph. He's like, what the fuck are you reading? <laughs> and I was like, porn. Yeah, basically. It was so much raunchier to listen to it. I it, can imagine it. it was, oh dear God, no. Yeah, it was just mm-hmm. like, I'd be, because I listen to audiobooks when I'm driving to work, when I'm getting ready in the morning, when I'm getting ready for bed. If I'm cleaning and my husband's at work, you know, I'll, I listen to audiobooks. So listening to that, like before work, you're like, oh no, like. I have to go to work. I feel so dirty. <laughs> yeah, I feel so dirty. And it's just like, you know, don't tell me that you haven't seen porn or you haven't seen a porn because you're fucking well, lying. You're lying five to yourself. people out there in the world yeah. that haven't. That's, yeah, the five people yeah. who are probably in church and haven't seen porn. Okay. <laughs> but the rest of you have seen some form of porn. It was dirtier. No. It was dirtier reading descriptions of what was going to happen or what was going to be done to the doer. Uh-huh. You know? That was, in my opinion, so much dirtier. So much dirtier than... See, and that's the thing. That's the reason why women love these books. It's because if we sit and watch porn, we're not visual like men are. Men are visual. Right. We are... Oh, auditory? Is that... Is <laughs> that the, the ear thing. Yeah. Or we can visualize really well, you know, well, and when like we read it. reading is very descriptive. Plus, they're reading it to you, so you got the right. weird thing going. And, like, the thing my cousin had said is that it isn't just, like, I mean, really, when you go to Pornhub or whatever, it's, what, 10 minutes? A porn is 10 minutes long, and it's like, oh, blah, blah, blah. They have <laughs> sex, and then it's done. Yeah. This was, like, a whole, like, story of how a couple met, and to me it felt more intimate because of the fact it wasn't just, like, a... And plus there's foreplay, plus there's afterplay, plus right. there's snuggles where in a porn you just do it and you get on with your life. Right. Mm-hmm. So there was so much more intimacy. Now E.L. James has a book called Grey, which is Christian's version of essentially Fifty Shades of Grey. Um, to me, that seems like a waste of time. It's like you already wrote the story. Yeah, you already if you already read Fifty Shades of Grey in the series, I I started to listen to it and I was like, no, fuck this. It's pretty but the much thing, the same I mean, thing. she wrote it wanting more money. I mean, you know, obviously, which, yeah, which yeah. is fine. I mean, make the money how you can. That's you go, girl. Yeah, I don't know. It just to me it was like, eh. yeah. it it was something I've already read. Now, 
you watch the movies. And to be fair, when I started reading the books, the thing that I kept hearing was that they're terribly written. They're terribly written. Mm-hmm. Um, well blah, edited. Blah, blah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And did you find that to be true? Not really. Mm-hmm. Like, from what I did read, I didn't. And from what I listened to, I mean, obviously, I... You can't see yeah, that. <laughs> yeah. I have heard the movies are terrible. The I did not see not the movies. not good. They were not stimulating to me. I am just like... <laughs> so right. it wasn't porn. Because that's the thing. Everyone said, how how are they going to... How gonna... can you do porn in an R-rated movie? Yeah. You know, it's R-rated. It's porn. How Maybe are you if we're back this? in the 70s, you could get a little bit more action going on with an R-rated movie. But nowadays, you can't. Not with all right. the... And the thing is, I was going to look this up before we talked about the podcast. And the only reason why I watched the movies, first of all, to see what was going on since I knew I was never going to read the books. But I worked at the library, so I, as soon as they came in, I brought them home. So, you know, I didn't have any rental fees or purchase them or anything. But the last movie, I don't remember how it ended. It was a horrible ending. I mean, the movies were not that awesome to begin with, but the ending was horrible. The very last movie? The last movie. And I don't remember how it ended, but Isn't I that when they got married, but there's something else to it that just I'm like, what? I came she downstairs. Was pregnant, was right? that what it was? I, I, I honestly was. don't remember. I think like I read these quite <laughs> a while ago too. Yeah, I, think she I was watched pregnant. It. Maybe that was what it was, but it it was just I think maybe it was the wording or something something that happened. I do not remember. I wish I would have looked it up. But I was upstairs watching it, and we had some friends over, and my husband was downstairs, and I came down the stairs, and I'm like, that was the worst ending ever. So, sorry to keep you in suspense because I don't remember what it was, <laughs> but... Um, go rent it. Go rent it and find <laughs> out for yourself. Now, a, a little story I'm going to share about the Fifty Shades of Grey, and this always makes me chuckle, is my mom... Growing up, I remember my mom reading Flowers in the Attic and The Butcher Boy or something. It was like some true crime or some gruesome murder thing. These were like the only things I ever saw her read. And it wasn't until I was older and she was sickly, she died of ALS, that she started reading more. She was constantly reading. And we had a Kindle account shared with her. So I'd see what book she was getting. (laughs) I go on one day and there's Fifty Shades of Grey. And I'm like, what? I didn't order this. And then I look and she has the whole trilogy. And I'm like, mom. I love it. You're nasty. (laughs) So if I ever do want to read the books, they're upstairs on my Kindle and I can. I don't think I ever will, though. I don't. Well, I enjoyed the books. I don't, like, my husband had said, because he knew I was reading them, like, do you want to go to the movie? Do you want to see the movie? And I'm like, no, not really. I don't have any desire Mm -hmm. to see the movie. And I heard they were so bad. I'm like, no, I don't want to spend the money. Like, (laughs) And then you had, like, groups of girlfriends, like, all going to the movies together. It's like... Okay, that's that's fine. You know, a girl's night out. That's awesome. But I don't. That just seems this was weird the book that every mom's group was reading. Was reading. Yes, that's true. And I feel like, and and I don't totally recall this, but like, kind of on a little off topic. But like, I remember being in like I think I was seventh or eighth grade, and a friend of mine was reading Twilight. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, what are you reading? And she's like, oh, Twilight. And I'm like, and she kind of told me about vampires. I'm like, oh, okay, that's fucking weird. You know, mm-hmm. whatever. The sparkle. I didn't, like, register really what she was reading. I'm like, okay, you know, whatever. But then, like, probably my sophomore year of high school, it blew up. Mm-hmm. Then everything was Twilight. And I'm like, oh, my God, this has been around for, for years. Mm-hmm. And it's just hitting it big now. And I thought that that was kind of like a same Similar type of situation with this. I don't know how long it was out before it got big. Got big, but yeah, it's crazy how certain I, things do. Yeah, I thought it was some a, a yeah. situation like that where it might have been out for a little bit before it actually blew up. You know, and I can't diss the Twilight series. As well I as love I them. To. I enjoyed them. I read all the books. I saw all the movies. So. I know, and I enjoy them. I'm not shitting on Twilight at all. Yeah. I like. I liked it. Do <laughs> I think that um, it's the best book ever? No. no. Do I think it's a little weird that they, some of the things, yeah. Do I some think. Some of the relationship things, yeah. Um, what's her name? Kristen Stewart? Yeah. Oh, my God. A lot of people agree with you with oh that. Oh, my yeah. God. I, she has but, one face. She does. But I've seen her in some other movies since, and, like, that face works for those movies. So. Right. That's awesome, you know? And yeah. I don't know. I would have liked someone different for that role. But, mm. Anyway, Regardless. back to the mister. Have we even started talking about the mister yet? Not Let's really. start talking about the mister now. Okay, so do you want to just dive right in on your notes? What would you like to do? Okay, yes, because okay. I started from the beginning and then I kind of stopped taking notes. Okay. So, 
this really, I can tell this really bothered you. I mean, just by okay, yeah, the so way it's worded. Uh, I listened to the audiobook of this because I said, you know what? If I listen to Fifty Shades of Grey through the audiobook, Was I'm going to do it this way. Was it the same reader person? No. Okay. At least I don't think so. I mean, it was a long time. Yeah. But whatever. I I think you get more. I enjoy audiobooks. I enjoy reading, but I think you get more from an audiobook. Um, I know you don't like them. I can't handle them. It's just because, like, I know so many people listen to them and love them, like when they're driving or doing chores and stuff right. like that. If I listen to an audiobook, I need to just be sitting and listening. I can't be doing anything else, which is really weird because I multitask beautifully. But when it comes to that, I do not. Probably because you're trying to catch, like, specific details. And And my thought is, if I'm going to sit here and listen to a book, I'd rather be reading it. So that's why I don't. See, and for me, with the mister, having, they had a British accent, because obviously they're in... Britain. Yeah. Over there somewhere. I think it's Europe. Yeah. Yeah. They're over there. Um, (laughs) And it was kind of cool, because when they talk about Alessia... Playing the piano, they play like a little bit of the piano That's music nice. was on yeah. the background. Mm-hmm. It was just they had some of the um there's more substance. Where to is she it. yeah, where is she from? Uh, uh, oh I'm like trying to blink. Uh this it's from country. like the Middle East. Yeah. Um, we took bad notes, sorry. But they even spoke like in the native language oh, a little bit. Very cool. You know, and I don't know if that was written out in the book, but mm-hmm. it just it gives, it's almost yeah, to me it it's like watching a movie. Mm-hmm. So but with that said you know, I go on listening to this, and I my first note is the responsible, well liked son dies doing something not responsible, and to handle the grief, the irresponsible, less like son fucks his widow, widowed sister in law and best, Slash best friend. friend. Yes, but they've had sex before, so you know it's cool. It's grief, right? You know, you're just you now a little bling. backstory on that is that. Apparently, they had had sex before, mm-hmm. and she basically chose his brother. Because he was the one with all the money. Because they always, the saying that they had said in the book, which I hadn't heard before, is the heir and the spare. And so technically... Maxim was the spare. The spare. And Kit, the brother... Who died. Was the heir. Mm-hmm. And so she chose him. Old digger. <clears throat> yeah. Mm-hmm. And so... When I first hear that, I'm like, Jesus Christ. (laughs) Like. It's a tale as old as time, and it's going to be told over and over again. But to me, it's fucking weird. Like, (laughs) if you die, I'm not going to fuck your husband to deal with the grief. If you want to, I don't care. I will be dead. You can do what you want. (laughs) It's just. But I think for me, too, they were friends before and lovers, you know, and. People deal with grief differently, and there's a lot of sex after funerals. So, because yeah. you wanna, you wanna grab life, and yeah. So, but I know for me, it was more the gold digger aspect. Yeah, of it. and yeah. later on in the book, it goes even further. I think. Yeah, and yeah. she expected them to get together. Now that he was the, is he an earl? What is he now? No, now he's technically the heir. Yeah, but um, I mean, he has some title. So whatever, some lord, something, lord, something. Yeah. So like now a, that he's the head honcho. Yeah, she just expected they would get together, you know, and I'm just like, oh, dear God, lady. <laughs> yeah, and you know, and he was actually pretty decent about the fact, because this is the other thing. <laughs> so she picks the brother. They're married. They have been trying to have a child for oh, like two years. Yes. He didn't leave her in his will. Like four months la- earlier. I wanted more details will. on that. They never go into that. No. They never go into it. It's like, was she... Like, cheated on him and Kit knew, and that's why he didn't put her in the will? You know, why did he not put his wife in the will if they're trying for a child? That's... Right. And at one point, she thought she might have been pregnant, and that kind of pissed me off because it's like, do you actually think you're pregnant, or are you like, hey, my husband died, I'm not in the will, I might be pregnant Mm -hmm. type situation? Which, unfortunately, once again, that's a story trope, which is a thing. I know. (laughs) But... So that, so anyway, Maxim was actually really decent about that and was like, no, you'll be taken care of. I'll make sure you get taken care of, even though you're not in the well. You keep the house, the huge house that you're living in will give you a allowance, stipend, whatever. Plus she was rich herself. She had money herself. Right. So it's not like. She didn't come from like. As much money as him. But yeah, she had money. I, the next one I put is that he gets a new maid 
doesn't even notice. Shocking. Well, he and, was a playboy, you know. He didn't have he didn't have any responsibilities. He was just partying every on his night, chest. having yeah. sex with women every night. And that's all he was thinking about. Yeah, and the amount of like the beginning of the book spent on him just fucking randos. I wrote I was, notes about that. You know, I was like, I I don't care. Like, I don't care about every girl he fucked. And then it was to the point that it was like, how long has it been since I had sex with someone? Oh, I don't remember. It's I need to go out and hours. yeah, I need to go out and have sex with someone else. Yeah, and I'm like, really? Like, see, the thing that drove me nuts about him having sex with all the randos is. To me, it felt like filler. If yes. you watched our previous one on a serial killer's daughter, I have a problem with authors who put filler in. This book is filler. Not only do we have filler with him having sex, and the thing is, okay, this is supposed to be a steamy book. You know, we're supposed to be getting excited sexually reading this book. The way that she wrote the sex scenes with this these women, it was basically they got into bed together, they humped a little, and that was the end. It was not... It was not sexy for a woman. You know, there was no details. There was no foreplay at all. So we get filler this way, pages of filler, and I'm just like, pages. this is supposed to be a steamy book. If you're going to be doing this, I want some sex scenes. Now, the other thing that was filler with her too, and this drives me nuts, is she would like write the word shit, period, and then it'd be a new line. So this book, I don't know how many pages it is, 400 pages, whatever, it probably could have been down to 200 pages if she wouldn't have done things like that between the sex scenes having no real sex in them and the way that she kept writing like single word sentences. I'm like, if you don't have the material, don't write the book. Well, and I mean, keep in mind, you're coming off huge success with Fifty mm-hmm. Shades of Grey. Mm-hmm. You can get some good editors. If you need someone to help you write that book, a ghostwriter, <laughs> whatever, you can find them. And James pay Patterson? Them well. Pay them well, though. Don't be a douche and not pay them. Is James Patterson Oh, he's available? got so many. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> get one of his ghostwriters. That being said, you're coming off Fifty Shades of Grey and that success. Mm-hmm. So, obviously, you know how to write a sex scene because you've well, done it. that and we have an expectation. Exactly. We have an expectation going into this book that it's going to be equal or better it, in my mind it should have been better you know and it there were just it things was that it was like um i made a mention that you know the new maid mentions a forbidden room and i'm like is this 50 shades of gray that made me laugh though that that i actually enjoyed because she was doing a nod to the first book and later on when you find out what the room actually is i'm just like oh dear god really this yeah stupid you didn't even need to mention it but the fact that she did I it laughed just, at that. It, I know you thought it was stupid. But yeah, I'm like... Are you, it made me chuckle. <laughs> and then... Oh, I do have it written down. Mm-hmm. The new maid is from Albania. Albania, yes. And the thing that really, really kind of irked me a little bit, given the current environment, is like I'm picturing this maid as like... And she was a refuge. Mm-hmm. As like... I'm picturing her as like what we see on TV like that's going on in Syria. You have this asshole guy who doesn't even notice his maze, really. I mean, it took him, I don't know how long to recognize, like, oh, hey, I got a new maze. Mm-hmm. Who is just fucking randos left and right. And then, like, there was a part where he talks about she's cleaning the piano and he's picturing her in, like, pink underwear. And I'm like, how disrespectful. And it was, it was over and over again in the book. It wasn't just, like, one or two times. It was, like throughout the entire book talking about her pink panties or underwear and I'm just like dear god you need maybe you need a little bit of editing here and you need more more story by the time I was done like reading the uh, or listening to the initial probably quarter of the book I'm just like this guy needs rehab (laughs) he needs to go to rehab but he gets rehabilitated by this woman because you know every woman is either a saint or a whore and she was a There's saint. No middleman. Exactly. So she was able to rehabilitate him. And the thing that I think really bothered me about using her, her character, I guess, mm-hmm. was the fact that he didn't pick up on cues. Like, yeah, he didn't like, pick, why doesn't she like me? Why doesn't why she want to be touched by me? me? Why, did, why is oh she skittish? Yeah. It's like... It was First a, of all, you're a man. Women are skittish of men. If you don't know this in 2019, dear God, go back into your cave and stay there. But 
be observant of your surroundings and how you're treating other people. And if, uh, yeah. Well, and just, like, he had mentioned, like, her shoes had, like, holes in the mm-hmm. soles. And it's, like, we call mm-hmm. that a fucking clue. Exactly. Like, she's cleaning your house. Mm-hmm. She needs money. Mm-hmm. You know, you can tell by her accent. And I'm not saying to, like, racially profile or whatever. But I'm saying, like, you are, there are clues that she she's skittish. She, like, he was talking to her and she takes steps back. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. To just not be aware of that and then to just throw in sex stuff on top of that. I'm just like, how disrespectful. But she liked it, so it's all fine. Yeah. (laughs) Good for her. Yeah. Now for me, just really quick, starting out, the book actually started out decent. Even though I was talking about how she was doing one-word sentences... A lot of thrillers are like that, you know, when the woman is being chased, you know, to it's to add action and to, you know, get your heart pumping while right. versus this book going. So the first page or whatever it was, it had her fleeing. At the time, we didn't know it was her, but it was. And I'm like, oh, okay. It's got a little thriller action. I might enjoy this. Yeah. And then I wrote the beginning could have been down to three paragraphs. Um, really? Yeah. If she didn't keep repeating the same words over and over. Please, dear God, don't let the rest of the book be like this. Although it would make for a fast read, so I can skim it. <laughs> so that was great. Now, another little thing I got here is the sister-in-law. Don't remember her name. She's, uh, Carolyn. Yeah, Carol. He always called her Carol. Yep. Um, I'm horrible with names, so that's a thing. She calls her father daddy. And I'm like, what motherfucking grown-ass woman calls her father daddy? I, that just that, That's a thing for me. I'm just like... Oh, that's oh, weird. <laughs> no. As you get older, Danny means something different. Exactly. She's nasty. <laughs> so that annoyed me. And then I also talk about the repeating words, which I've told you numerous times. So no. And then all women are whores or saints. This is a direct quote from the book. This is um, Maxim after having seen his, he was naked on his bed from a night of having sex and the maid came in, didn't know he was in there. So, you know, whatever. A young woman, an angel. Possibly the Virgin Mary or a nun in blue standing in my bedroom doorway watching over me as I slept. Dear God, stop the stereotype. Not every woman is a whore or a saint. We are many, many different things. You know, and the fact that he goes from all these whorish women having sex with them to this virginal, beautiful saint woman. It's like, just stop. And it was pissing me off that he was doing these kind things Mm -hmm. with the intentions of getting fucked. Yeah. He gives her an umbrella. Okay, that's not a huge How thing. many times have we been there as women <laughs> where it's like... I'll buy you a drink, sweetie. Yeah, you think someone's being genuine and then they're not, mm-hmm. you know. And it just, again, the whole fact that it's like you pray, you pray, he prayed. He prayed mm-hmm. upon this poor woman who, thank God that he did fall in love and whatever. Because otherwise I would have been like, what a major asshole. But is going to because it's this type of book so right come on. yeah but i i just did not like how her character like they made her to be so frail because the thing i liked about 50 shades of gray was christian was not a sex fiend i mean he was but it wasn't like as emphasized on him going to the bar and picking up strange like he had distinct people that were like his lovers and they were tested and he treated them well and they knew what they were getting into right there was contracts and whatever Mm -hmm. um it wasn't just like constantly going to a bar and the other thing is is i believe it was anastasia Mm -hmm. right um the female person yes she was naive she was young but she also was aware of what she was getting into you have, and she grew stronger throughout the book. Right. You know. Here you have two totally different cultures because, like, towards the end of the book, they talk about when he goes to get her, you know, why are there not women out here? Why are there – it's like, because, you <laughs> dumb ass. Like <laughs> – You know, and the thing that gets me, too, is he's rich, so he's traveled. And he even says someplace in the book that like, he's he, traveled. Right. Then you can't be naive of other countries. You know, you can't be like, right. why are the women and men separated? Do cultures still do that? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, lots of cultures still do that, buddy. Right. And so it really, really just pissed me off to just have such a naive asshole, Mm -hmm. you know? Because, like I said, with Fifty Shades of Grey, yeah, it's raunchy, yeah, it's kinky and all this stuff. But overall, 
the characters of Christian and Anastasia, Stasia, whatever. I thought they were good characters. There's character development and they developed more over the right. series. I didn't feel like it was some guy preying mm-hmm. on someone. And it's like for him to not realize that she clearly comes from a culture that demoralizes, demeans women. Mm-hmm. And then to be like, yeah, I'm picturing her in, my, in a pink mm-hmm. bong. Just, yeah. I didn't like that. Dear God. Ooh, mm-hmm. several mentions of mm-hmm. her licking her upper lip out of nervousness. Nobody does that. Right. Nobody sits there nervous and goes. <laughs> but like I said, in the Fifty Shades of Grey book, didn't she bite her lip all the time? So yeah, like, obviously it's an oral fixation that James is trying to go I mean, I get, like, but it's I an don't oral fixation. lick my lips. I feel like I have been through all the <laughs> But my lips are chapped. That's why I but need you're some not, chapstick. But you're not sitting here like, oh my God, I'm so nervous. Oh, oh. Tittle, tittle, tittle. Yeah. No. <laughs> my biggest thing, I'm not going to re- repeat the other two things I've said, and this kind of goes along with it, though, is once again the sex scenes. Even... Okay, I'm done talking about the sex scenes at the beginning. I'm talking about the sex scenes between Maxim and Alicia. They weren't tantalizing for me. They weren't... They weren't that good. And the longer... Okay, out of all the times that those two had sex, like, they probably had... In, like, I don't know, a week that they were together, they probably had sex, like, 50 times. Uh, Maybe that's an exaggeration, but it was a lot. It was, like, constantly. Be like, let's go again. Okay, that's fine. Whatever. When you get into a relationship, you're young. That happens. Right. But that'll fade. That'll fade. But maybe it not, which is great if it doesn't. But not only were they not that tantalizing for me, like out of these 50 times that those two had sex, there was maybe like three descriptive times of them. Right. The other times were once again, uh, she touched my thigh. I got hard. We did it again. You know, and I'm just like, I need some more descriptions. Like if you're going to make... If you're going to write this book based on sex, Mm -hmm. because quite frankly, I, and I don't know her thought process. I don't know if she sat down and wrote Fifty Shades of Grey as like the love story first and then incorporated the sex um, or how she did that. But like clearly going into this, we knew a lot of people were coming here for the Mm -hmm. sex and it wasn't that great. It wasn't. And I also wrote that like other authors, like ones that I've, just read recently Gina L. Maxwell. She has the Fighting for Love series. The first book in it is Seducing Cinderella. I mean, that was good. You know, the sex was good. And in a female's point of view, the way it was stimulating and exotic right. and nice. And then like years ago, I was maybe too young when I read this series, but my mom didn't care what I read when I read it. So. <laughs> Thanks, mom. The Sleeping Beauty trilogy by Anne Rice. Yeah, those scenes, I mean, they're like, oh my God. And I mean, I probably read this book when I was in high school. So that was like 25 years ago. And I still remember this series, you know, scenes and yeah, scenes from the series. Impression. Exactly. And I mean, maybe it was because I was a teenager at the time. Maybe, I don't know, whatever. But I actually just reread the first book, I don't know, maybe three or four years ago again. And it's still, I'm like, dang, yeah. you know? Whereas this one, I would never be like, oh my gosh, you got to read it, you know? Yeah. I think a few other things to mention, and I think this might be your note, but just talking about the amount of time he has talked about and needing to get laid and all this stuff. And then the like the buildup was just too too much for, yeah. for not nothing not a good payoff (laughs) yeah you know the one note i had made regarding him and his sex life prior to falling in love so i'm like he probably has an std sure he does you know Mm. Um, well he did though the condom was very you know she made a point right so maybe maybe he was safe that way another thing to note is the one thing that they shared in common which i guess was a little confusing to me was the piano the thing that was confusing to me is, like, she's coming from a culture that demeans women. Where did she, she learn how to play the piano? Right. Where the fuck did you learn how to play it's that? It's a poor, poor village. Right. Where did you get that? Yeah. You know, and so she had this, she, there's a big fancy word for it, but basically she saw music in color. Mm-hmm. And so she could memorize pieces like Einstein of music, right? And he really enjoys music and that was something they really bonded over but to me just being the skeptic i am i didn't 
it was like how how did she how did she even learn how to play? Like she's mm-hmm. from Albania, and I'm not saying people from Albania don't know how to play piano. I'm just saying she very clearly touched on living in this poor village and they were not being able to do anything. Right. She even said at one point what she does with her mom is cook and clean. And Maxim's like, you lead a very boring life. She didn't say anything about going to the piano hall every Saturday night. Right. So it's like, "Eh." and that's a, I mean, that's a big part of the book. Very big part. I mean, that's one of the big things that they connect over. Mm -hmm. The other note I see that we have is that there's something fucked up about Kit. And I totally agree. So Kit dies. He's the the heir who dies. And he dies because he's riding a motorcycle on an icy road, correct? Mm-hmm. And it was night, nighttime. nighttime yeah. And they kind of allude, both Carol and Maxim allude to him committing suicide. Mm-hmm. No detail. No details Nothing. at all. It's like, okay. Like, that's kind of a big fucking yeah. deal. Between the will... Her not being in the right. will and him committing suicide. I mean, these are points that you kind of need to elaborate a bit on. You know, and if you're not going to elaborate on the suicide, then don't even bring it up. You know, it was just a straight up accident. You know, right. it was a dark, night. icy night and he died. Yeah. And to me, like, when I heard that, because a lot of times when you're reading thrillers or books with, like, murder or suicide, like, there's more. To you it. know, like, they're using that to build upon... It's a their clue story. Or something else. Yes. Mm-hmm. And for here, it was just like there was no purpose in bringing it up. And since, yeah, since they didn't elaborate, she didn't need to bring it up at all. It, She didn't need to add that to the book. No. Book. And I felt like, I mean, and I don't know what your thoughts were because they briefly brought it up in the beginning mm-hmm. and then briefly brought it up in the end. When I heard about it in the beginning, I'm like, oh. I'm kind of thinking in the back yeah, of the like I'm gonna, book. Yeah, like I'm going to, I'm kind of interested yeah, to see what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Kind of pissed me off because I'm like, mm-hmm. You just drop this little thing and you're like, yeah, we're not going to touch on that. We just want you to read the whole book. And then I thought at the end when they did bring it up again, that there's going to be like a big revelation for something. Yeah. You know, and it wasn't at all. Now, the other thing I have is WTF Magda. um, She keeps selling the girl out, you know, by telling her parents and stuff. It's like. And that wasn't explained either, you know. No. I mean, granted her. How, like, what happened or what she said. Yeah. Um, granted, like, her and her son were threatened, you know, by the bad people. Right. So maybe that's why she sold him out, you know, the second time, because she feared for her son. But they had, he, but Maxim had security. security on him. So it's like, so this lady is just randomly selling this poor girl out, you know, who was sex trafficked and lived in a poor, abusive the house. Right. I'm just like, once again, why bring that up, you know? It's yeah, like, like, like they said, because the, the sex traffickers... I guess to elaborate, so she left Albania. Her mom set it up for her to go with these gentlemen. And, and she didn't know it was sex trafficking. Right. She thought it was... It was for a better life, mm-hmm. and they knew she was going to be cleaning. It ended up that these guys were sex traffickers. And it was like a van full of girls. Mm-hmm. Alessia knew English, so she heard one of the guys say that they were going to earn their money on their back. Mm-hmm. So when she told this to the other girls... There was one girl she was close with that believed her. There's like three total. Yeah, and the others did not. So Mm -hmm. she fled with the other girls. And she walked for like seven days and nights to get to this address that she had written on this piece of paper that her mom gave her. And that was this Magda. Magda, Magda. So she was staying with Magda and her son. Now, in the middle of the book, that's when... The sex traffickers find her. Yeah, because they're essentially looking for her. And they find her because of Magda. Yeah, telling. I think Magda, I think the first time Magda called mom to let her know that she was there and safe. Right. And then maybe mom or the husband, the dad, whatever, you know, said something to these people, um, hopefully not realizing that they're sex traffickers, so they knew where she was. Right. Okay, I can see the first time, whatever, that's fine. But like I said, the second time, Magda and her son had security on them. Yeah, because Maxim paid Mm -hmm. to have his friend and the best security on them so that these guys would not um, come back. And then he took Alessia somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there was no reason and that she did it. So once again, I didn't feel like this needed to be in the book, you know. Well, I felt it needed to be there, but there needs to be more information. Exactly. Like, you don't... The second time, why did she do it the second time? What was her reasoning for doing that? And the other thing, too, 
that we touch upon very briefly and it never gets explained more but it was touched upon in such a way where those three or four girls you know that ran with her right we never hear about them again but yet the way she talked about them it seemed important right you know so it's like so even though this book I felt like had too many pages compared to the sex scenes and the way she had the sentences going we still needed more detail Right. So maybe she should have left out those single sentence paragraphs and gave us some of those details that we wanted instead. And that, I mean, that comes to writing, but it also comes to editing. You know, the editor should have been like, okay, we need more details here. This doesn't make sense. Explain to us why this is. So, yeah. Yeah, and I see in your note here, it looks like it was 503 pages. That's a big book. Yeah, I mean, the the audiobook (laughs) version... I think it was like How many hours? twelve hours. That's a lot of lot of time that you yeah. spent listening to. Yeah. That. Did I enjoy the book? Yeah. I mean, would I knowing what I know now, would I go and pick it up to read? Probably not. I just don't feel it compares to Fifty Shades of Grey. Mm-hmm. I don't feel I feel she left a lot of things um out and didn't out. put enough things in that she should have put in. Right. And I like I said, I really just don't like that she had the the main character almost be preyed upon, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know. Because even though she was a grown woman, mentally she was, it was, there's a she huge was, cultural difference. Mm-hmm. For, and she was only 23, I think, and he was 28. Yeah. So that's, that's still young. That's still pretty young. Right. And having gone through the things she went through, mm-hmm. and the book basically, you know, ends with, well, well, don't tell how the book ends in case well, you're wondering. <laughs> okay, I won't tell you how it ends, but basically it's just... That's a typical romance. Yeah, it Happy just... Ending. Yeah. I it left know. you not satisfied. Like yeah, I finished lover. listening to it and I was just kind of like, okay. Yeah. like That's how I was. I'm like, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Thank whatever you believe in. But it wasn't good. Yeah. Would I recommend it to anyone? No, I wouldn't. I'd and say I, go read Fifty Shades of Grey. Right. Or if you're a lady and you like some steamy stories, there's a website called literotica.com. Go read there. Got some good stuff going on there. Or it sounds like Sleeping Beauty yeah, by Sleeping Anne Beauty. Rice. Mm-hmm. I guess if you're going to, if you want to experience E.L. James, I would start with um, Fifty Shades. Fifty Shades. Mm-hmm. And just don't get your copy from the library. Buy a new copy or put it on your Kindle because that's disgusting. And if you get it from the library, wear gloves. Yeah, and make sure you wipe it down with a yeah, Germex. Germex. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that's really all we have for that book. There yeah. wasn't, I mean, it wasn't anything crazy or super in-depth. Mm-hmm. So, again, I don't think either of us would really recommend it. Check out our other podcast where we discuss... A Serial Killer's Daughter by Carrie Ross, and I don't have the, the cover on it. I took it off. It, that one's about BTK. Check out what we think about it, if we enjoyed it, if we recommend it. Um, we'll have another podcast coming out just discussing what I've been reading on my personal time, what she's been reading on her personal time, um, and what we recommend. And we'll have podcasts every Monday, so check back Monday. Like, subscribe. We're on Instagram. We're on yep. Facebook. And if you have any recommendations on, like, books, feel free to to mm-hmm. send those to us. No guarantee we'll read them, but we'll definitely check them out. Yeah. So. And if you're an author and you got a book, you want to send us a hard copy or if you have an ebook or something, like she said, we won't guarantee we'll read it. But right. <laughs> there's a good chance we probably will. You know, we're pretty easygoing. Right. And it will be an honest review. It will. 